Um, so hi everybody, my name is uh, Chris Marlowe. Um, I am going to discuss today um, a little bit about prototypical inheritance. Um, for those of you who have been in the industry for a while, you probably are pretty familiar with it. Um, if you're newer to JavaScript, then this might be something that's very important for you to understand. If you're coming <coughs> from another programming language that's classically based, uh, it's also going to be very important for you to understand. Um, so let's get into it real quick. <coughs> Okay, so who am I? Uh, real quick, my name is Chris Marlowe, and what um, what I am is a self-taught developer. I've been doing this for um, a little over a year now, and um, you can follow me online on my YouTube channel, Code Chris. And the thing is, is being a self-taught developer um, right now is a, a really good time because you can learn a bunch of things on your own. With JavaScript, you'll learn really quickly that there's a lot of confusion going on because of this whole prototypical thing. You basically are trying to understand languages to begin to, uh, to, be under, to begin with, trying to understand what the syntax is, trying to understand all that stuff, and eventually you get into trying to figure out why JavaScript is weird. Why does it have these weird quirks? Why is it there seems to be such a, a one group who loves it and one group who despises it? Which brings me to the very real question of why did I choose this particular topic? And like I said, being self-taught, um, and not just that, but I've come across uh, many people who just in general don't quite uh, understand prototypes, or they're just not interested in it, because there's a way around it. Um, whatever the case is, the way the um, JavaScript is viewed, people like to bring it in the direction of, well, how our class is viewed. How can we make this into a sort of a class-based system? How can we make it work for us the way we understand it? All right, so I'm doing this talk because at the end of the day, we all like big fancy words. I like prototypical inheritance because it makes you sound extremely smart. Uh, just like I like to use the word syntax concatenation because you say it around somebody who doesn't understand <coughs> about development and you sound like you have like a PhD in vocabulary. Well, at the end of the day, um, one thing that we're going to take away from all of this and that I'll reiterate over and over is that JavaScript is a prototypically based um, language. And that's really what's running underneath the hood. We'll get into some of the things that cause a lot of this confusion. And I think the reason why this confusion is caused is because of the fact that there is, once again, that sort of drive to stray away from what it really is and how it was kind of actually designed. When you're learning a new language, uh, you come across a number of things. So the first thing is, we all know with new frameworks, new libraries, whatever the case is, you can jump in right away and get started. You don't really have to understand why it works the way it does, how it works the way it does. You just need the documentation that tells you what to do, and you can get something done. <laughs> it goes the same way when you're learning any new language, whatever it is. Once again, if you are new into programming, or if you're coming from a different language coming into JavaScript, you can get started right away, start building some stuff. But do you really understand why it's working the way it does? And then when things aren't working, then you get people complaining about, ah, it's got all these weird quirks. It's got all these weird bugs. It's, it's failed from the beginning. Um, further, uh, furthering this, as we go into just more of the progression of JavaScript's evolution over the years, we are now at a current, um, a current standard. Where there's even something like uh, the ES6 standard, where class is now introduced as a keyword. Well, this is kind of causing some confusion for people like myself who are new in but being told that classes don't exist, but now they do. But how do they? So I'll get into that. Um, once again, I kind of explained this, but yeah, there's a whole debate on the best approach to doing any programming language, and specifically when you're trying to make it do something else and mimic a class-based system. Um, and yeah, you get the idea on that. OK, great. So. Real quick crash course on anybody who's new or coming from somewhere else. Um, at the end of the day, uh, the history of JavaScript has been repeated over and over and over, and everybody knows the story. Basically, it was originally designed um, on one language that was uh, about a higher functioning language um, called Schema, and um, and then at a certain point they're like, ah, oh, we gotta like you know really start to introduce these like Java concepts because that's how we can get all these programmers in. That's how we can really sell it. Like we gotta make this popular and a whole marketing thing, and eventually you get JavaScript. It is what it is right now. Uh, this sort of like weird hybrid child that's trying to be something to appeal to people <coughs> who just aren't interested in it. Um, and this push for more being stuff being more classy 
isn't necessarily, I'm going pretty quick, <laughs> isn't necessarily, uh, uh, hasn't stopped. It's, it's still continued, as I mentioned earlier, with uh, the introduction of class. Um, before I get too much into this, I just want to reiterate, um, objects, as we all know at this point, it's just a, set, um, it's just a, uh, a key and a value pair. That, that's all it is. And the way JavaScript treats objects is a little bit different than some of these other languages, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, JavaScript is so typical. Yeah, we get that. Class and prototype differences. OK, I mentioned classes. I mentioned prototypes. Let's actually start figuring out why am I even talking about classes um, during this whole talk. OK. Um, the thing with classes, the way we're taught, the way it's, it's been brought up to us numerous times, at least in my opinion, is it's always kind of been this sort of like subcategory more specificity, right? We've all seen the example where there's a group of animals, inside <coughs> animals you have mammals, inside mammals you have cats, inside cats you have Mr. Whiskers, right? And Whisker, Mr. Whiskers has all these things and he's, he inherits all these things. I mean, that's how at least I've understood classes, and that's kind of how it seems to be the case. <coughs> um, prototypes are not set up in that same way. In fact, the reason why we even call it prototypical inheritance is kind of strange. We should really call it more like prototypical declaration, right? Because what it really is, it's not so much that Mr. Whiskers is inheriting all these traits from its um, parent categories. It's more like Mr. Whiskers is an object cat is an object, animal is an object, uh, mammals are an object, and um, via a prototype chain, or basically via relation to one of their buddies, he's able to get certain attributes um, from one of the other objects. And I'll explain better how that actually works. Once I get the prototype chain, it'll make a lot more sense. Um, Okay, once again, just kind of the reiteration, typically how we tend to refer to classes. You're kind of inheriting traits from a, a parent class. This is more how prototypes work. It's more of just, I, you have that thing, great. There's two separate objects, and they're basically, um, I'm going to take or borrow that ability from you. Yep. You think you made that clear? All right. <clears throat> so, what exactly is a prototype? Let's get a little more specific. Um, a prototype is just an object. That that's all it is. It's an object. What makes it a little bit different is the fact that that object is being referenced by another object. <laughs> so, um, the cool thing about this is that you can have two different objects referencing the exact same object. And in the same uh, way, you can have um, these objects share a prototype or um, get different parts of the prototype. Essentially, the nice thing is, instead of having to inherit all these additional fields that you may not need, you can actually be selective about who your buddy is, who your partner is, uh, who your prototype is. Um, so the way the prototype chain works, so I kind of basically mentioned that there's this thing called the prototype chain. Um, and the easiest way to think about it is, like I said, everything is separated by objects, right? So if you were to have um, uh, one object with a set of properties, and it has a buddy, his prototype, it's just a reference to another object with its own set of properties. What we can do is we can actually get access to the properties of that prototype without actually having it on our original object. So what does this mean? So it's actually easier if you kind of like look at this chart real quick. So <clears throat> uh, your first object would have a, a, a property of number one, right? That's all it has. That's all it physically has on it. So how on earth does it get access to this thing called property three? Well, it has one friend, one prototype. And that prototype, so it's right here, whatever that object is. And that object has a property number two, whatever it is. So this guy has access to property one and property two. Now, neither one of these guys has a property three. 
That doesn't mean that using this object, I cannot get access to it. Because this object also has a prototype. And he can call his buddy and be like, hey, do you have a property number three? Yeah, I do. Great. Let me take that. Let me take that. And bring it all the way up to object number one. This is sort of how the chain, the chain uh, works. You're not actually inheriting anything. He still does not have um, in that object that um, property number three. He is just simply getting it via the prototype chain. As I mentioned, the really nice advantage of this is you're not wasting extra resources or extra, um, uh, yeah, extra resources, really. Because what you're doing is you can have another object reference the exact same um, object that's being referenced by another one, and they're both referencing the exact same uh, object. What this means is that if you were to take this object, add additional properties to it, take away properties, or whatever the case is, this would affect anybody who's referencing them, because they're all referencing the exact same thing. OK. OK. All right, so um, object.create. Oh, yeah, that's right. I prepped this already. OK, cool. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's way fast. Uh, spoilers. Yeah, how do I just need to? <laughs> there we go. I guess I'm going to have to do it this way. Oh, special. <laughs> Come on, he's only 16. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. Because I didn't want to deal with the hassle of a bunch of typos. I kind of got some stuff prepped for us. And that's not working. <clears throat> All right, whatever. You need to do that, but you cannot. Good, fine, whatever. Just go through this piece by piece. All right, great. So anyways, this is just some pre-written code to help save me some time. <clears throat> all right, so what I wanted to talk, before we start getting into the things that you probably all have questions about, like, well, what about class? That's a, that's a thing now. What about new? That's basically like object creation at that point. Um, let's just back it up a bit and just break things down to a little more specific, just straight up prototypes. So. Here we have an object, uh, object called hero. Um, it only has one property um, called uh, punch. And punch is a function, OK? And all it's going to do is just console log out you know, whatever um, this uh, punch sound is. OK, great. So um, let's see here. OK, cool, right. All right. Um, Sorry. Um, so we make a. I mean, we make a, a variable Batman, right? He's gonna do um, object uh, object dot create hero Batman dot punch sound equals bam Batman punch sound. It's going to emit bam. All right. What 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 on earth actually happened? Okay. <clears throat> this piece right here is actually using prototypes. It's using a prototypical approach of creating a new object, or um, sorry, a prototypical uh, approach of actually, um, uh, yeah, creating an object. Sorry. Okay. Oh my gosh. This is a alternative, just to actually break down what its equivalency is doing. That object dot create is uh, basically nothing more than a function, right? And inside that function, it's giving a, given a parameter. Um, in this case, I'm calling it proto, right? So whatever you put inside that, um, as that argument, um, we're going to set the prototype um, of the object. So what we're going to do is we basically do three steps. And this is the object that creates uh, actually doing as a pro as a, uh, oh my gosh. You know, take it back. Saying that word over and over, a lot more difficult than I thought it'd be. <laughs> OK, there's three steps it does. The first step is it's going to use a brand new empty object. 
once it has that brand new empty object, it is going to assign whatever argument you put in, which is going to be the object that we, we picked earlier, it's going to assign that, um, that object uh, to um, the empty object as its prototype. So we can go ahead and get those properties without actually having to, um, like I said earlier, attach all those properties on the initial object. You're linking the prototypes once again. And then you're returning back that object. Uh, this, this function I, I wrote, object create, is the exact same function as the create part of um, object.create. Um, and I'll show how this works in just a second. But um, to, prove, to prove my point here, um, I built a second variable uh, called Robin using my function. And just give him a different sound. Great, fantastic. Uh, let's actually get to... Those are the two sounds that were emitted, one from an object that was um, attaching the Batman sound punch, which was using object.create, and one that's using um, uh, Robin using the uh, function I had set up. Um, this is, in its most simplest form, essentially how you get these properties onto um, a, uh, uh, on, onto your object without actually getting them on there. Um, what I um, neglected to mention is this prototype chain, it goes down and it keeps going down all the way back to the global object. So even if you make a brand new um, object, an empty object, you're still going to have a prototype. Every object has a link to the prototype. That prototype is if you don't assign one, it's going to be the global object. Sorry, I'm not used to the screen. Yeah. Okay. So that's just straight up prototypes. Like that's just straight up using a normal prototype. It's not really trying to hide it very much. It you, when you see object.create, there's a function in there, you, you start to get how things are working. Well, eventually, like I said, there is this push to make JavaScript more classy looking. Um, so every um, object, like I said, you have access to the prototype. And you can get access to the prototype by going underscore underscore proto. But there's this other thing that you can get access to called prototype. And this is where things, once again, can get confusing. Well, there's a proto and there's a prototype. But only one's the real prototype and one's this entirely different thing. Why is that even there? Turns out that prototype only exists on functions. And why does it only exist on functions? It's because of the new keyword. So the new keyword is, oh, 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 oh. Jeez, Louise. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Sure. <laughs> Just click off. There we go. Great. All right. Okay. I'm just going to make myself familiar. Okay, cool. All right. All right. <clears throat> All right. So uh, the new keyword is uh, introduced as a way to um, sort of kind of, once again, kind of blend that, um, that gap. So we can kind of start thinking about prototypes like classes, start treating the structure of JavaScript like it's class-based, like it's creating new objects. But it's not. 
Um, so real quick, we have a very simple function up top here. Uh, function says uh, a function that's a, a person, and uh, it's, we're just going to use the argument of saying. It's just going to respond back with that. Um, okay. This is uh, we're all familiar with um, how to build a new um, how to use the new keyword. So we use person dot prototype dot talk. Uh, um, we're putting in a set of function, and I'm just spitting out you know so I can get this this word over here. So my words of wisdom include, and then whatever we're throwing inside a person. Okay, so person. Okay, so if Iron Man over here is going to be a brand new person, and we put in the argument of blah 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 blah. Okay, we and uh, oh my gosh, did I do this wrong? Oh, no, we're good. Yeah, okay. This is the part where it gets confusing for me. <laughs> okay. So, right, okay, cool. Sorry about that. Okay, great. Okay, so um, now we're, okay, so back it up. So we have a new person, Iron Man. Iron Man's argument is blah, 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 blah. Okay. If we were to call Iron Man talk, because of the prototype, we know that this guy up here is going to um, spit out that entire line, right? That's how the, the new um, piece works. The reason why I say it gets confusing to me is because when you're jumping back and forth between these things, it makes a lot more sense if you were to back it up and think of it more like a prototype. Of what on earth is the new word doing? There's a lot of magic going on behind the scenes just to make it simple for us to go, okay, new, blah new object is whatever. Okay, this is really what it's doing behind the scenes, okay? The magic, once again, that's happening behind the scenes, it's all done with prototypes, okay? And the way it's being done, I just wrote a different function, called it newer, um, and basically what's happening is uh, it's taking four steps, okay? The first step is it's going to create a new object, just like before, nothing new about that. The important part is set the prototype, object that set prototype of, and then whatever this object is. Great, it's empty. Then we're gonna do the constructor prototype. Okay, that's that's a little bit of a twist. Didn't see that coming. All right, and then the um, then we're going to have to. Uh, uh, but now, because you once again you're not inside of a class-based inheritance system. What is this referring to? Well, you actually have to bind it to something. You actually have to tell it what to actually refer to this as. So there's a whole mess of stuff going on here. But basically, just know that they're throwing in an argument, splicing out the beginning piece because of some stuff with when you get back an argument, it doesn't come back like an array like it should. Um, and it's just spitting out the rest of it. And then it's going to return back um, that nice object. Um, I also found out that this piece here is included um, as uh, a failsafe because if the object that we created, the object or the, the function we, we wrote earlier has a return statement, um, and it's not commented out, but if it has a return statement in there, um, by default, that return statement will actually come back because, once again, we're, we're kind of cheating the system. We're, we're, we're cheating it so that we can make the new keyword work. Um, so, do, uh, okay, cool. So, Iron Man Talk, real quick. Uh, Iron Man Talk right now is using a new person, the way that we're uh, familiar using the new keyword. Great. My words of wisdom include blah, 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 blah. All right? But, just gonna that one on. Really? Not right now. And then we're going to do the exact same thing, except instead of using the new keyword, we're using the newer keyword. And the word is uh, yada, yada, yada. Words of wisdom include yada, yada, yada. So once again, it, it's, it's, it's all just magic on top of, of all this stuff that we're using these keywords to create the illusion that JavaScript has abilities it doesn't really have. Now you can make the argument whether that's easier or harder or more difficult or whatever the case is, but just so you're aware, once again, at the end of the day, JavaScript is built on prototypes. And um, 
Hey, Chris. Yes, sir. Is your wife pregnant? Uh, we have a four-month-old now. Chris, there's a link or a bookmark up there that says video your and begins pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, <laughs> she was. <laughs> okay, great. I was like, how'd you know? Because you did uh, incognito your browser. <laughs> no, that, that's okay. Always a good idea. <laughs> it's my wife's computer, not at the Fi, I'm sure. Even more so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, bring up the browser history, will you? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was sure to like, get these ready. I was like, oh, I don't want to have to like search for anything just in case. Okay, um, so like I said, there's a lot of pressure to be a, a, a class, right? And um, there's all these different ideas of what's better and what's the best approach, and that's kind of besides the point. The world we, the the world of um, the online com community for us that are trying to research this stuff, we hear things like Java, C Sharp, Python, because we want references. We want to get the idea of what works and what doesn't work. And then we get JavaScript, and we're told, OK, well, it's got this thing called prototypes, and here's how you can build it. Just understand this is how classes work. So they try to teach us something, uh, something that doesn't actually exist um, on the actual platform. All right, let's talk about class. So the most obvious thing when I, I started this um, and I started digging into it was I'm like, okay, well, there there is there is a class now. Like they've they've had to have like fundamentally changed some things. I don't know how. I mean, I don't I don't know how to code that deeply, but they must have done something to actually make it work like class. Because um, now in ES6, class is a keyword. There's things like super, and, and the whole structure of it looks a lot like a normal class system in other languages. Um, and the, the thing is, is that what I'm about to show you is um, it's not real classes. Um, it, it's, once again, magic behind the scenes that's going on to make it easier to introduce it to somebody coming from a different platform or for uh, some newcomers because we learn a lot about classes everywhere. It's easy to find classes online. It's not as easy to find anything about prototypes online. Um, some of the things that make it kind of obvious that this isn't a class-based system. Um, private does not exist. Uh, static does not exist. Things are not protected like, like they are in other systems or uh, other languages. Um, And once again, because we want to treat it that way, we've come up with hacks to make it work. Uh, new practices, new standards for things that we want to be private, that we don't want to accidentally type in, right? And so by that I mean there's things like um, a common practice is to use, uh, hang on. Come up full screen. There we go. Whatever, you guys can spot us to see that. Also, if anyone was curious, nobody's mentioned anything because you're all so polite and quiet. Um, the reason why everything's skewed to the left is because I know when this gets presented that I'm in the bottom left-hand corner. So. No, I moved the camera because you keep going to the middle. All right, well, you know what? My whole system's off. <laughs> um, OK. <laughs> so uh, for those of you who come from uh, or, are, or already know how to do uh, classes in other languages, uh, this looks a lot more similar to what you're used to. You got this whole kind of uh, hierarchy set up going on. Um, this makes a lot more sense, a little more straightforward on what's going on. There's no, uh, there's, there's less um, confusion about when I say something like, well, class, uh, the class of cat extends mammal. That makes a little bit more sense to, to us um, on, a, on a more straightforward level. Okay. All right. Um, okay, cool. So with this particular example, um, so here we have uh, basically, uh, okay, so we're going to use um, talk, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, cool. All right. So we're going to use uh, talk as the function. It's going to return this dot sound. 
Um, at this point, I don't think I need to repeat exactly how that works. OK, great. So um, great, this is why it's important. All right, so pretty straightforward. Before I do anything, uh, two things. One, like I said, um, there's such a thing as private. Outside of that class, I still have access to those properties. The, what, the standards, the hacks we've introduced are things like introducing a, oh, come on. Introducing a uh, uh, underscore so we don't accidentally type it and don't accidentally overwrite it. That's not something that would happen um, in uh, other languages because you simply would not have access to it. Um, but at the end of the day, if you want to, you always just type in an underscore and overwrite it. Okay, um, let's see here. Why is this important? doing certain things. Could have done that the whole time. OK, anyways. OK, so um, it's really, really dark. But basically, there's an x, a, a y, and a z, just quick variables I wanted to spit out. OK, <clears throat> so over here, there's x, um, which is whiskers, uh, dot, um, whiskers uh, talk, which is basically just going to, once again, re return the sound, right? OK. <clears throat> Well, what exactly is a uh, type of cat, right? Because it's here, it says it's a class, right? So what it, is it actually? It's actually a function. Uh, once again, we're disguising it. So it's actually a function that we're doing a bunch of stuff with so that we can build a structure like it's a class. Um, the reason we know it's a function, and like I said earlier with that whole new introducing prototype, so here we have cat.prototype.talk.bind. Um, I can directly access the underscore sound, which I should not be able to access. Uh, it's coming from somewhere else. Um, I'm not coming from somewhere else. Um, this um, sound is overwriting uh, the earlier sound. Before I confuse myself. Um, <laughs> it's confused. It's overwriting the uh, earlier sound. Um, and the reality is I should not be able to, to get access to that. Um, and that just all goes into the fact that, you know, prototype is not an actual prototype. It's a function, and that function was made so that we can use it as magic so that we can have something to access prototypes and insert prototypes elsewhere so that we can build a structure that looks like something else that it isn't. Now, at the end of the day, this might be like, well, Chris, who cares, OK? That's a lot of mumbo jumbos, a lot of stuff going on there. At the end of the day, I can build my structure like this. I can build classes now. I have that power, right? A um, couple things. One, the reality is, is that a majority of the code out there right now isn't quite at the standard yet. It'll, it'll take a while, right? A couple of years just to even get close to that. Um, so it's important for us still to understand prototypes. Um, the other thing, too, is that when you start to see all this extra, I don't want to say baggage, but all this extra things we have to do, um, uh, all these extra things that we're doing to think differently, when you start to come across bugs and you're not quite sure why your code's not working, it's a lot easier if you're building things with prototypes in mind and you're trying to build things from a more a prototype approach because then it's a little bit easier to debug, OK, well, why is this not referencing that? OK, I see. This is not protecting whatever. Versus this, there's a lot of magic going on behind the scenes that, frankly, I mean, I, I didn't know really how class was working. Like, there's, there's still a lot of magic in there that's not quite clear to me. Um, uh, even when you're thinking about something like the new, which we use all the time, there's still a little bit of magic in there. Um, and this is not to say that any practice is better than the other, but once again, when it comes to debugging, when it comes to understanding what it is, what you're doing, why you're doing it, um, you're just making things a little bit easier on yourself 
uh, in the long run. Look at how happy he is that there's classes. Okay. Uh, yeah, classes. Okay, cool. All right. So, um, in conclusion, uh, you know, thank you for everybody for, for coming. Um, I just wanted to uh, uh, try and address as much of this as I could in regards to um, the importance of understanding uh, prototypes. Now, a lot of this, uh, it may not have made total sense. Welcome to prototypes, right? Um, but if you start to look into it more, if you start to actually think about, okay, well, everything's eventually going back to the global object. Everything is actually not really inheriting, it's um, you know, borrowing properties from another one. There's advantages to this, um, there's a lot of power to this, and really the thing is we shouldn't be hiding JavaScript um, and, and, and hiding what it really is. What we should be doing is embracing how it was built, how it was meant to be built, and it makes your uh, life a little bit easier and ultimately makes your debugging process, because that's reality, right? You got a lot of bugs. Um, it makes the debugging process a lot simpler. Um, and then when you're debugging somebody else's code, same idea. So anyways, thank you very much. And uh, any questions? Yes, sir. Question, um, <laughs> dot prototype versus uh, dunder prototype? What's underscore underscore proto, or proto, yeah. Yeah, what's the, what was the difference? Yeah. Okay, so the main difference is that, so, um, in JavaScript, every object has access to a couple of things, right? It has access to um, the uh, to the this keyword, and it also has access to in this case, um, in this case, in all cases, it has access to the prototype. Um, every object, when you create one, uh, immediately has access to a prototype. By default, unless you assign it, the, by default, the chain is going to immediately go to the global object. So every object has proto, uh, the, has a prototype in it. The prototype is labeled as underscore underscore proto in the uh, in the uh, in, in the markup or not markup, but uh, when you type. If you want to get access to the prototype, um, the let me so actually, if I do if I do type of a prototype, it gives me dunder proto. Is that let, me, let me do the, this code to you real quick. Um, so let's just say uh, there's a variable, right? And it's called like apples. Oh, I didn't say that. Cool. All right, cool. There's uh, this guy right here. You were not assumed. Oh, I am not. <laughs> Perfect. Damn. I just you just shift or command plus. Command plus is easier to zoom to use. Oh, there we go. Yeah, oh. wait until the end of the presentation to say this. <laughs> Okay, all right, uh, great, all right, cool. So here we have an empty object. This object has literally nothing, uh, no properties. Okay, but if we were to go to apple dot, um, there's all these things it has. Well, that doesn't make sense. How does it have all these extra uh, abilities? It's because it's inheriting them from uh, its prototype. And if you were to go underscore, underscore proto, it's done intentionally so you don't accidentally uh, uh, overwrite it. Why, why is that like half hidden? Okay, whatever. Okay, so uh, if you go to Apple, um, that is going to proto, you, you can actually see, actually that's not a good one, let's do this. There we go. There we go, that's a better way of seeing it. Okay, so doing, underscore, uh, doing the dot underscore proto will give you access to the prototype object. To actually see this chain in action, here's your object and it has one link to its proto. And of course that proto is your global object. And so you get to inherit whatever properties um, that your proto um, has. So uh, if we were to do something like, um, oh boy, let's see here, like uh, orange, why is this? I don't, I don't know. <coughs> whatever. So orange has property two, okay? It's the only thing it has. And if we were to do, um, let's see, uh, let's see, object <coughs> dot set uh, prototype of <laughs> set prototype of um, it's the object 
and then the proto, right? So let's say we're doing Apple. Apple to orange. Yeah, okay, good. Great, okay, good. All right, so uh, what I've done is I basically have set the prototype of Apple to be orange. So the Apple has one prototype, which earlier we saw was the global object. Now I've changed it. Now the Apple has one prototype still, but that prototype is orange. We know orange actually has uh, one property on it, property two. Oh, sorry, property is what I called it, because I'm uh, let's see here. So if we were to access Apple, boom, Apple has absolutely nothing. But if we look inside of Apple property. Oh, did I do this wrong? Scroll down. Scroll up. Yeah, scroll oh, down. scrolled up. Scroll down. There we go. Hey, look at that. Okay, cool. So uh, Apple has absolutely nothing, and that is true. Um, but it does have a prototype, and that prototype has uh, property two. That's because its prototype, like I mentioned earlier, is orange. But it doesn't stop there, because now you can start to see the chain in action. That prototype has another prototype, because everybody has one friend. And that friend is going down the chain until you reach the global object. So Actually, if, you, that, that, if you type apple.prototype, what do you get? <laughs> oh yes. Okay. So I'm guessing what the difference between the, the, the between the underscore underscore proto, which is the real prototype, and the dot prototype. Right. The dot prototype doesn't actually exist on this because it's not a function. So if you type in uh, proto, you'll see it like it doesn't actually exist. Right. If you need to type in, just get on the phone. Yep. It's because it's not real. But if we were to do, um, I don't know why I'm doing fruit. Because I think it's because everybody does animals. And I'm like so tired of every example always being about cats. Um, OK, cool. And then this one is uh, it's uh, a function. There we go. It's a function. And um, it just does a. I can't like see the screen. Right, whatever. I'm winging it. <coughs> I'll just be like, what up? Okay. Ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that 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 was. Yeah, just close your bracket. Mm -hmm. There we go. Good. Uh, Great, cool. All right, so melon is a function, and that should have prototype. And like I said, this was introduced um, specifically so the new keyword um, could uh, be utilized and do all of its uh, crazy magic. And now it looks like it's also being utilized for the class um, keyword as well within that structure. But um, so then it kind of just inherited by the class since it is a function. Be that one more time. I guess I'm saying it's not also being used on classes. Classes are functions. Right. Yes. You can see how quickly this gets confusing. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. So, any uh, other questions? So, if you go one step further and see what Melon dot prototype is. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm sorry, I thought I did it. Dot proto, it should say function. It's a constructor. There we go. Yeah. So. And that is a problem. It's a function with, of course, prototype. Because functions are objects, and once again, all objects have prototypes. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? So, Chris. Yes, sir. So, um, obviously, it's important that we understand the tools that we're using, right? So, I think this, this is a great presentation. I, I really like it. Um, with the advent of like front end frameworks, you find you know I can't remember the last time I had to do <coughs> uh, my own objects or do an object I create. Where do you see use cases? For, I mean, other than like understanding what what's going on with the hood, where do you see like some of the use cases? People say like, well, if you're writing your own library, you might have to do 
you know, some of these use cases, but um, I've been writing JavaScript for five years. I, I've never really had to seriously use uh, prototypal inheritance the way you know, it's commonly used. So what do, you, what do you think are some use cases? Yeah, that, I mean, that's kind of what I was, I was saying. It's like, it's, it's, um, it's not so much that I, I think, like, I'm on a revolution and this is gonna like change the world or anything. Because you're right, like the reality is a lot of the code, the, the reality is that we, we tend to skip over JavaScript's history uh, a lot because it's like, ah, there's just weird stuff that happens. The reality is like a lot of that weird stuff is because we've created hacks, we kind of built the structure in a certain way to, to build the, and the reality is is that I think it might also be a sort of an ine inevitable train, right? The reality is, even if right now there was just like this big push to be like, you know what, let's commit, let's change the flow, yeah, I don't think you can do that. Because, you know, with things like introducing the class keyword, the reality is, is that is in the standards now. It exists. So you can't just strip it out because now you're going to have compatibility <coughs> issues, right? Now, it, it's in there at some point in the past, somebody's written with it. And we don't want to be one of those languages where it's like, oh, well, that's, that's deprecated now. That's deprecated now. And you know, we have enough issues with deprecation with everything else. We don't need the main language to have that issue as well. Um, so as far as the future, I, I don't know. It's a good question. Uh, a part of me wonders, a part of me wonders because I think there's a lot of inevitable bloating that's going to happen uh, just because we we want I think the nature of, of development is ultimately to try and get things such, to such a high level that it's very easy for us to know what we're doing very clearly right like that's one of the nice things like people love about Ruby it's very clear to understand kind of what's going on it's a little more um, verbally communicative um, but once again, I think the more we sort of put the magic on, put that sugar and all that stuff, it's going to get a little bit more bloated and stuff. Now, the nice thing about JavaScript, because the way it's set up and because it's actually built and run, it runs extremely fast, actually. Um, so uh, JavaScript itself runs very quick. The DOM's a different question. But JavaScript itself is actually very, very fast. Um, so is the bloating OK? Well, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I mean, how many years before before it will even make a difference is, is a good question, um, but I think that's just kind of the inevitability of, of the nature of things, um, because let's let's face it, um, all of us are building on top of different libraries, on top of different um, you know frameworks, all of which have their own quirks and their own things which are out of our control, and that's just going to be built on and built on and built on, and um, yeah, I, I don't know other than. You know, you always see, um, there's always people who are very adamant about like, oh, I can make this even better. I can make it even faster. But like I said, because of the nature of the size of things in JS, I don't know if it'll ever really get to that point where people will sort of drastically change their mind. I think more at the very least, um, it's, it's kind of nice to really be thinking about it just because when you do get these weird quirks, and JavaScript doesn't behave like a normal language, you kind of know why. And instead of blaming the language, you associate it with, well, you know, it, it's, why is it, why, why is it actually acting this way? Um, and you'll realize that's not really JavaScript's fault, you know, so. You just paddle JavaScript too much. Do I? <laughs> <laughs> you, you started to say, like, well, you'll be able to figure it out and not blame JavaScript. And I was going to say, no, you'll be able to figure out and prove that it's, you know. <laughs> it is well, you and Brendan Ike. Right. Well, and, and see, yeah, I mean, I, I know what you're saying. It's just really interesting because, yeah, I, once again, it, it, it's got weird, weird stuff that happens all the time. But it's not like it, it doesn't happen for a reason. But whether that's a good reason or not is kind of besides the point. But I think you had a good point earlier on um, to your question. It's just the ability to debug some of this stuff. And the idea that you know you don't ever have to use it is kind of like it's you know, you mentioned a DOM, like nobody ever has to touch the DOM anymore. And then you find out that uh, a lot of people don't know what the hell the DOM is or what's going on with oh, it, God. or how to just, you know, 
throw some shit into a component, dig mount, and not do all this other stuff, you know, because you need it done. Um, I think there's a lot of value in understanding how a prototypical inheritance works, without a doubt. And just being able to go into the console and do exactly that and take a look at something without scratching your head and having to, you know, track down some obscure required JS or Webpack problem. Just yeah, I, I, I think the other thing too is there there does, I, I kind of mentioned this kind of a little bit in the beginning, but there does kind of become this sense that, you know, and I can submit to it my, myself because I think everybody does. I don't really understand, but there's a tool for that, so I don't really have to figure it out. And, and you know, you're only as strong as your weakest link, and at that point, you become at the mercy of whatever library, whatever extension, whatever, whatever you're uh, adding. Yes? Okay, so to uh, actually make it even worse with the question I had before, I'm actually now in my 20th year of using JavaScript. You're safe. <laughs> I have never used a prototype. Huh. I don't feel bad now then, thank you. Because I, I'm not a JavaScript developer, I'm a developer that uses JavaScript. Mm -hmm. Okay. I build websites, I don't build frameworks. And I've got by just fine with never using prototype. So whilst this is cool, and I totally understand how it works, I don't understand why it needs to work. Well, well, I, I mean, <laughs> no, so and I've, you know what? No, no, I've made an entire career out of it, and I will never need to know what the point is. But I am curious <laughs> as to why do people like Joe care about prototyping what he does? Because he's actually a JavaScript developer, whereas I'm just a giant, a guy that uses JavaScript. Right. So one thing I would point out real quick is he said, I understand and know it. Not that you care about it, which is fine. Like I said, it's not it's not so much about how you go about practicing. There's nothing wrong with using new. There's nothing wrong with you know building up the the patterns so they more mimic uh, class based systems in other languages. That's fine. You're a developer, but the important thing is that you specify that you understand how prototypes work. Even if you're building those objects, even if you're building you know your uh, you know you're, you're spitting out your factories you understand how the prototype is working underneath the hood so that you don't accidentally do something where you make the assumption that you can um, you know, protect something inside of it. Uh, no, no, I never use it, so I never need to worry about what, whether I'm going to do something wrong or not. I just never use it. What are because you I only ever, <laughs> but I only ever write, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. at worst, I write 200 lines of JavaScript. Sure. I don't oh. need. I don't you're, need. You're from the '90s. Like you're just. I want to make a okay. key or dollar key. sign. Yeah, okay. the brand. <laughs> I want to clarify too. The tenor of my question was not why should we learn this because we should learn this. We should. I think anybody who uses JavaScript should at least know it. My question is like, where do I use it? Well, right? Because I feel like I feel bad because like I've been writing JavaScript for a long time. I would, I would say I'm passionate about JavaScript, but I've never like. Well, you. Clearly, and maybe I should be, right? skipped the whole object-oriented JavaScript <laughs> phase, I must yeah. where yeah. Was, everything was object.define property and blah, blah, blah. Okay. And it was crazy. I was writing C-sharp. <laughs> but, yeah, okay. yeah, okay. so maybe, but, I mean, maybe it's not a fair question for you, Chris. Maybe it is a question for Joe. As a, <laughs> as a li you know, lifer JavaScript developer, why is prototype important? <laughs> why is prototype important to JavaScript? Prototype is important in JavaScript because it's at the core of how JavaScript works. It but I've never needed to use it, so why is it important? Well, but you do but, but use you it. You use it constantly. You just well, never look under the hood, it. but you're using it constantly. It's like, why is dollar sign important to jQuery? It's not. And if you go look, it's really not, but you use it constantly, right? Even if you don't consciously use it, your programs do, because it's part of the lookup chain for how it decides what to execute. So is this the difference between I drive a car, but I don't know how I to do it? I was literally yeah. about to go there. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, but, yeah. but it's, it's, it's more that all libraries are there to abstract this stuff away. Right. Every single library, every single framework that you'll use in JavaScript is there to abstract this stuff away so you don't have to deal with it and they're doing it, you know, hopefully in a very smart and efficient way for you. I but like the word you used, hopefully. Hopefully, <laughs> but you will, 
run into situations, and maybe we're moving further away from it, like at this point, you know, maybe nobody's ever going to remember this shit. Maybe it's just, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, drawings on a cave wall somewhere. But I, I know for, you know, uh, I went through Backbone, I went through Angular JS, and there were lots and lots of times that I realized, like, oh my gosh, you know, people really don't understand JavaScript. They only understand Backbone, or they only understand Angular. And when, uh, and that's how you end up with these questions on Stack Overflow, like, how do I do a for while loop in jQuery? It's like, why would you need jQuery to do that? You know what I mean? I mean, that's a pretty, everyone's yeah. Yeah. seen yeah. that and, one and before. That's, and that's kind of what I was talking about. Like, at a certain point, it, it is going to get just to a higher level, abstra a higher level abstraction. <laughs> and kind of what I was talking about, me being newer into this, um, for some of you guys, you have years of experience with this. You may not have touched it or whatever. But you think of somebody like me, or even newer, like you come in today, do you need to know prototypical inheritance? I would argue you, sh you should definitely at least understand what the heck it is. Because, like I said, when I was trying to understand this, I'm hearing classes, I'm hearing prototypes, here's how you ignore it, here's how you pretend like it doesn't exist. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a silly thing that JavaScript does. Don't worry about it, just you know, use jQuery. Like that's, that's like the kind of answer because once again, if you don't know the answer, there's, there's a, a, a tool that you can use to get around it. And that's, as a developer, like that's our job to, to make it work. Um, but it's important to know why it works. You would, go back to the car, um, you would like to know that your mechanic knows how your engine works. Maybe you don't, but you would like to know that the mechanic isn't ripping you off when it fixes the engine or something. <laughs> Again, I still go back to the point of why does the engine need to drive the car? Why is prototype important to JavaScript? Is it is it that it is just a fundamental it's like building balls important to English? <laughs> no, no. I mean, I, I think I might have the answer for you. Like, you, whenever you need an object, you could just do curly brace and redefine the, the properties and redefine all the functions. Sure. Every time you need a cat, right? You could say meow, and you could write sure. the meow function or have a function that returns that object. But if you use new it's going to go to the prototype chain, and you're going to get all that for free. So there's only ever one instance I can of give that you function. A really good example of why it's important to understand prototypes, and that's polyfills. Polyfills are uh, a way that we add functionality to old browsers if it doesn't exist. And to do that, so like for each, at some point, you know, IE or whatever did not support for each. So what you could do is you could say if array dot prototype, you know, you could check the prototype yeah. for, for each, and if it didn't, you could create that. You could <coughs> add it right on to the native array in the browser yourself. That's a really good point. Um, and there's tons of polyfills out there right now. There's, uh, I mean, uh, fetch is a big one that's out there right now because we're waiting for browsers to all uh, uh, implement fetch. Um, there's tons of them. I can't, I can't think of a bunch off the top of my head, and we've all dealt with them right. yeah. uh, yep. over time. And that is a, uh, and before we had, you know, NPM or, or, or Bower, you know, you had to go get the code and paste it in or add it to your list of polyfills. And that's, you know, it's one line of code. You know, it's an if statement around one line of code that just recreates that function. And it's right there in your face, a rate up prototype. But, it, and, but so the key is you add it to the prototype once in every instance of array or whatever. Right, magically has Every single because one. of the prototype. Because chain. it's totally dynamic. It's not static. It's, it's also not static. Cool if, like, if I had made an object each time and I'd forgotten <laughs> to put for each on it, it would never magically get the for each ability because I had cast it in stone before for each existed. But with the with the prototype chain, it'll always go look. Hey, is there one of these out here? Oh, I found it. Up the like, up the then chart. your engine will run because you put gas in its tank. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the engine can be fine. Yeah. No good without gas. Okay, I'll go with that. So you're probably <laughs> using more than you think you're using. Yes, sir. Well, it's I'm, a, the I, I'm, I'm a Java developer. developer. Sorry? I'm a Java developer, so when you started talking about ES6 and do Apex 2, and I'm saying, wow, okay, with the class keyword, like, that appeals to me. Oh, constructors. Oh. So uh, <laughs> are, we, are we saying that what you just stated uh, a while ago concerning prototypes that, you know, is that where, when we're using prototypes, is there uh, that reason of always being able to go down the chain and actually have that defined function? 
how do those two differ? Is there an optimization difference as well? So like, like, like using more so the difference between the, the, a class and, and a prototype? Yeah, the way you define that. So, so the main thing to think about it, it isn't, isn't um, it's, it's literally that they are um, using separate objects, separate objects with separate properties. Okay. And they have a relationship. They, uh, the, the main object prefers um, to another object. I call it like the buddy, right? Okay. Um, there's, a, a, uh, there's a metaphor someone used, uh, which is basically like, um, if I need a pen, I don't have a pen. But I ask my buddy, you got a pen? He says, no, I don't got one. Let me ask my buddy. So on and so forth and so forth and so forth. None of us have a pen but we all have access to someone via this chain that has a pen. Um, versus the classes, we all have pens. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. I'm I mean, just gonna go with it. I mean, that's my brain said it, you, you shut that down really fast. <laughs> <laughs> right, is he right? I don't. Yeah, because every time you create an instance, there's an instance, 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 instance you yeah, have exactly. all these extra, all these extra properties. But in reality, I, I just have what I have. He has what he has. Mm -hmm. But I have access to that thing. Okay. Cool. But I thought classes were just syntactic sugar, sugar over. The, we're, we're talking. Words. We're talking Java. Yeah. I, I mean, like a real so, class in Java. Uh huh. Versus JavaScript. This is just syntactic sugar. They're right. not. They're not real classes. In right, JavaScript. but you were asking about the class keyword. I thought. Yeah, that, right. I was so looking at that. The and class keyword in JavaScript is just a fancy way mm -hmm. to to make prototypical inheritance look right. easier to us. Right. Okay. So under the covers, if you inspect a class mm -hmm. instance that you nude up, yeah, it's going to look exactly the same with prototype. Okay. As if you didn't use the fancy class keyword. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's a lot more. Uh, but fancy, so I didn't really try and figure that one out too much. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, under, but underneath, I, it's still the same. Okay. It's still weird. I thought it was a lure to you know suck in the. No, it is. Oh, exactly. <laughs> no, it makes your life a lot easier. Correct. That's, 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 I mean, that's why the language is called JavaScript to begin with, and now with classes, it's really a, a lure to bring in C sharp people because you Java people took too long. <laughs> <laughs> now you're all getting on board. Anyway. You can have interfaces and stuff. You'll be all happy. <laughs> but I mean, but you, you even said like it, 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 it like piqued your interest because like ah, I'm familiar with that. Yeah. And that's and that's really like the point of a lot of this. They've been trying to make it more. Well, these guys know this. There's a lot of developers that, that understand that structure. It's already built. How can we you know put a mustache on and say it's classy? And you you can use it that way. You can, I mean, yeah, you can. Yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing class, wrong and with this. Now it's got all this stuff. But. There are limitations to it because of the fact that it's not actually. Possible. See, I think it's the other way around. Cool. I think there are no limitations in JavaScript. Yeah, there's there a aren't. ton of limitations in classical language. There, there are. Yeah, I agree or, with you. Yeah. There's yeah. more limitations in a classical language than there are. In Rebel. <laughs> Rebel. <laughs> Someone tried a blog post or a video about that. It's not strong. You sure? For me, it was function says arguments. I like blue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I also just realized I didn't write what up. I wrote what up. I thought that was very clever because we can only see half of it. And you made an O, and we all thought it was a P. And I was like, this dude is sharp. <laughs> and he lived to like, play the joke on us, and we all fell for it. And then when you hit OK, I was like, ah, it was an O the whole time. Um, <laughs> any other questions, thoughts? Good job. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thanks, Chris. Thank you. Chris, it's not a daft question. If you've only been doing this a year, what did you do before this? Um, so my background before I got into the world of code is actually uh, in animation. I did motion oh. graphics and character animation. And um, and have slowly segued into front end development, and now I'm doing predominantly front end. And um, I'm actually now, like my next big venture is in the front end side of things, really getting into um, the animation that's being introduced um, via um, things like GreenSock um, and um, uh, 3JS yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, wow. just some of, some of that, that really cool stuff. Because I, I, for me, as I, I have an artistic background, I find a lot of creativity, believe it or not, in code. Um, <laughs> and um, I, I think that in the future, especially on the front end side of things, 
we're going to be seeing a lot more interactivity, a lot more animations happening. Um, but of course, there's the big question about like, well, what about load times? What about heaviness and all that stuff? Web assembly. Well, not only that, Go it's expected it now. <laughs> well, with S well, with SVGs, a lot of things are opening up. And, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, SVGs. Yeah. Yeah. It, like, Canvas hasn't made it. I love Canvas. Canvas is really good, but nobody seems to really, like, understand it fully. I love Canvas. Like, I jumped in. With, I had, like, a little bit of a action script background, jumped right in on Canvas and just started recreating all the old stuff I made in uh, Flash in Canvas. Um, but at the end of the day, most of the work being done is uh, SVG ends up working out because it's uh, obviously just by nature it's scalable, but we end up doing a lot of like data visualizations. At least that's most of my work. I don't write a lot of games, but if I want to sit down and make Pac-Man or, or I wouldn't make Pac-Man, but a snake breakout <laughs> or something, Canvas all day, and it's, it's a blast. But yeah, it just hasn't picked up, and I think uh, I forget who it was. The guys at Flipbook made like some React Canvas thing, and they just like really? uh, made a whole portion of their app in Canvas on mobile, uh, just so that they could get 60 frames per second. Hmm. So there's there's a lot of benefit there, but yeah, people yeah. just aren't. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm expecting a lot of things to start changing soon. There, once again, this is very off topic now, but yeah, in regards to the animation side of things, I, I see that. That coming up, and it's really been, I think, avoided just because it's a lot, a lot of people know how to do it. There's a lot of questions about it, um, and then that's a another beast because from an animation background, you're dealing with things like frames per second, you're dealing with squash and stretch, and with principles. It's a different field, and so that hybrid is going to be interesting. But I digress. Um, anything else? Just yes, sir. Um, why don't we try a little experiment? Look at say orange dot double underscore proto. Yep. And see if it's equal. Let's do like a triple. At, at this point, I've forgotten what, uh, <laughs> what orange is. Yeah. Okay, so orange. Okay, so orange is orange is by itself. Orange should uh, only have one prototype. Uh, they all have one prototype, but orange should only um, uh, have access to the uh, global. And then assign it to an emoji. <laughs> so let's say triple equals, tri like equal, okay. equal, 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 object dot prototype, capital uh, object capital. dot prototype. And now go ahead and do an up arrow. And let's triple equals to window. I see what you're doing. So I'm just, what it is, is normally you think of the global object like in a browser being window, right? Mm -hmm. I just wanted to kind of clarify that it, it's actually objects are based off of object prototype, like the two string method, these kinds of like a few simple things. So we you know, create an, an object, it's being prototyped off that object, that prototype object, not like the global object, just to be clear. Yeah. This Make window's a DOM-y thing, right? This yeah, exactly. So it's not. Like a doll inside a doll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Like when you go on Scooby Doo's dog house, it's a mansion. Like a target. Yeah. <laughs> my brain now. Not much. I did a little bit of action. I just started playing a few seconds. No, no, no. So did Mark, um, why does have their baby too, Mark? Yeah, yeah, right before the last one. So, he, oh, you know, again, thank you, Chris. Great job. Yeah. Thank you. And before everyone heads off, you know, yeah, go ahead and stop that, will you?